One of the panels that people don't really get to grips with when they first begin Nomad is this one. It doesn't even have a name, but it's about multi-resolution, voxels, Dyne Topo, and this one, which is all about decimation. So he let's have a look at the four things that make up this panel and where we can use them. One of the panels that confuses new users the most is this one here. So it doesn't even have a name. If you look here, you've got scene, project, material, but this panel, which is all about how we affect our geometry, um, doesn't even have a name. So I think this will change in the future, but I'm gonna quickly work you through what these four panels do here and where you use them and why you would use them. So let's pin that open and we'll start on the first one. This is just a default sphere when we open up, up um, Nomad. And if we come down to the bottom here and hit wire, you can see a wireframe. Now the first one is multi-res, and that means there's a multi-resolution, and these little ticks are steps. And multi-resolution means that the basic model has been subdivided, and that means each polygon is times by four every time we subdivide it. The default comes already subdivided. So if you slide this down, it goes back down the resolution. You can see that I'll slide it up and down and just show you one lower, one lower. And what's happening here is the, the face count or the vertice count gets lower and lower. So back up again, we've got 24,000 down, basically divide it by four, back down to 6,000. I'm rounding these numbers down. Down again, it's 1,500 and down again, and it's down to just 384 faces. And that now is quite a low resolution sphere. And that's what that sphere that you get as a default in Nomad is like at its base level. So you can delete the higher resolutions, and that means there is only a 384 um, polygon model there now, and you can add them back again by subdividing again. So do it once, do it twice, and you can see how the ticks are arriving here. And the reason that you might want more subdivisions like, or, or, or higher resolution with subdivisions is when you sculpt, so let's use clay and we'll put, we'll make sure that symmetry is on, wireframe is off. And when I sculpt now, you can see the, and smooth as well, it, it basically, the higher resolutions give you a better surface to sculpt on. And that's mostly why we would do the higher resolution. So come back down come back down, come back down, and you can see how the edges got jaggy there, but you can't really tell until we put wireframe on. And that's the essence of multi-resolution. And we do that when we've got a predictable mesh, say it's a head, and we've sculpted it to a certain level, and we don't want to affect the geometry. We want to keep the geometry like that, but subdivide it more. So that's when we would use that. So the next one along is voxel remesh, or voxel remeshing. And what this does is, it affects the overall service by redistributing the polygons. It's not as predictable as, as this would look as it, as it is now. So let's just give you an example. So there's a slider here, and as you slide this up and down, you can see this number changing. That gives you a grid that's an approximation. So bigger squares means you're gonna be lower polygon. You can go all the way down to next to nothing, and smaller ones in the grid means that it's gonna give you a higher one. Now there's a video up at the top that will explain a little bit about voxel resolution in other programs. Um, th this one, that one up above is actually in, in Adobe Medium, which is a VR tool, but it's exactly the same. And voxels are where you put, a, a, or, or in this terminology is where you put a grid around something and you remesh it based on whatever's in that grid, and that then converts it back to these normal polygons. You don't need to worry about that bit at the moment. Okay, so the next one, um, the, the, or the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it. So let's go lower, go all the way down to really, really low, and we'll hit remesh and see what happens while the wireframe is on. So the multi-resolution will be lost. So that's a good thing to remember, is if you've got a cube and you've subdivided it, when you come to do voxel remeshing, you're gonna lose that subdivision. So click OK, and you can see there, it's made a really nice go at making this lower resolution. So it isn't brilliant, um, and, it, and, it, and we could have even gone lower actually, two fingers to, tapping to undo, go really, really as low as it will let me, and it gives you that. 
so it's a little bit lower i think so that's one way to do it but what about going much higher so we'll let's let's try something like let's go up to about 100 ish and do it again and say yes and you can see that it's much much more higher polygon but what's interesting there is if you put wireframe off can you see how it looks like it's still made of polygons and that's because it will remesh the shape that you've you've um, come from so it's trying to replicate the shape that you were using before so if you remember let's double tap to go back we had it very blocky and it's made it's gone higher resolution but it's kept that blockiness so let's do it one more time let's go a lot higher this time and you'll see what happens remesh and you can see if i turn wireframe off it's kept that blockiness again now, if you didn't want to do that what you would do is from this point wireframe on you would come back to the first panel and you would basically go higher resolution higher resolution then to voxel and then remesh it what that's giving you is a much it's still a little bit blocky but it's a much much smoother sphere overall if you do it that way let's undo that now and if you look at the polygon count make sure you've got this on which is your stats um, which come from up here in um, come up to display settings make sure stats is on there and then basically we've got um, the number of the amount of ram we've used and the number of polygons in the scene so you can always look at it there instead of up there so there's 6146 uh, vertices in the scene the vertices are the points around the, the faces okay so that's how we use voxel remesh and where it's useful um, the, there are a couple of things that get really Com more complicated with voxel remeshing so for example if we had two spheres so let's take this sphere duplicate it use gizmo move it across scale it down a little bit now one's like inside the other as you can see let's make this one black force paint it so we can see the difference and what you can do with voxel remeshing now is that you can take both of them with a selection the tick and the lower one hide it so you can see it's invisible now or semi-transparent and then if you voxel remesh and you can do it from here voxel merge instead of doing it from from the panel that, that we were looking at if you do it from here change that resolution as you already know i'll go quite high with this one do voxel merge and what that does then it uses the voxel merging to clip that away so that now you can see that the polygons are the same remember they were quite blocky so you could have made them smoother first and you could even now go back up here go to your multi-res and you could subdivide again now and that will smooth it down a little bit or you could just smooth using the basically just use this the, the the smooth brush the better thing to do would be to get that right before you do that so that it's nice and smooth before you actually do the voxel removal so let's add another sphere so we've just basically done new and added a new sphere there and we'll do we'll make that the same color so we'll just force paint it the same as that orange and as you can see now this has already got the um the multi-resolution at a higher level so remember what we did we just come up here so before we can look at that we have to validate it and then come and have a look up here look at multi-res and you've got it, it's frozen now because when you start a model if you haven't validated and then you validate that will freeze it at that level so there aren't any um, subdivision levels in that particular model you can add them now you can go in and you can say multi-resolution subdivide you can see that that's up to 24,000 subdivide again it's up to 93,000 subdivide again it's getting quite large now basically if you look at how blocky the previous one we did was let's go and duplicate this one move it forward again make it black so that we can really see what we're doing scale this one down and then come up here and put them both on but hide the second one again exactly as we did with this one over here then do a simple merge but let's set our setting a little bit higher voxel merge that 
Now what you get is exactly the same as that, but it's a much, much higher resolution. So if you put the wireframe on, they don't look much different until you get close in. In fact, it doesn't look a whole lot different. It just means that before we started, this one looked a lot smoother. And that's what you've got to keep an eye on is the polygon count and basically what the surface is like. So turning the wireframe on and off is, is a good thing. So with this sphere then, let's use this sphere and go to the next one. So we've done uh, multi-res, we've had a quick look at voxel remeshing, and there are lots of other things you can look at there, like keeping sharp edges and, 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 and lots of different little settings. Let's just go to Dino Topo. I'm, not, I'm going to quickly cover this because it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference to us. Basically, if you enable it and you start to sculpt on the model, so let's put wireframe on, so we'll use something like crease. And now if I draw a crease, you can't see much with the wireframe on, but if you look there, it's made it much, much nicer to crease it. Now, why is that? That's because with that setting on, as you paint and draw, it gives you more polygons. So you can see that it's actually adding the polygons where you need them on the fly. So that is quite a, a good one to do. And also if you smooth, it will smooth it back down and it will change the polygons again. So let's do it with wireframe off. So as you're sculpting here, you might want to sculpt like this and it's doing it. If, if this was a low resolution model, it would also work. Let me prove that to you, I'll undo it. We'll go up here and we'll say new and we'll add a cube. So box, let's move the box over here, make it this orange color and just force paint it. And now instead of validating it there, what we'll do is let's just make it a little bit smaller so it's the same sort of size as these other two. Instead of validating it, what we do is we come up here and we can basically lower the um, box topology. Wireframe on, watch. We'll go all the way down. So all the way down to nothing and then validate and you basically get a six sided cube. So they're, they're each, each side here is one face. So go up here now and switch Dino Topo on. And now try and affect it. Nothing is happening in each of these faces. And that's because generally sculpting works on polygon, on, on vertices, not polygons. So what does that mean? So if I, I actually sculpted in here and nothing was happening, but I sculpted on the edge, can you see what happened there? So that is remaking the model underneath where I am, but on a on a point level. So watch, come along the edge, nothing happens, nothing happens. Then I hit the point. As soon as it gets within a certain uh, area of the point, it starts to change the surface like so. And that'll happen with all the brushes, actually. So if you use something like flatten, that'll work now because there's lots more points to work with. So you have to bear that in mind when you're doing it. But a good thing to do would be, let's go back a, back one and we'll go back to multi-res and we'll subdivide it. But before we do that, we'll use flat subdivision. Why are we doing that? Because flat subdivision will subdivide it without rounding it off. Without it, you get this, which is a rounding effect, which is normal subdivision. Two fingers to undo it. So we'll subdivide that with flat subdivision on a couple of times, like so. So now when we use something like crease, if you've got, switch it back on. So you want the third panel, dyna, dynamic topology on. And now when you do it, you can see there's more vertices for it to work with straight away. So it's giving you what you want straight away. So that would be a better way to, to, to do it if you were going to use it. I personally don't use that a lot. A lot of people use it for when they're sculpting on faces, but I don't find it that, that useful, to be honest with you. So let's just move to the side here and we'll cover our last one, which is this one, which is decimation. So decimation basically reduces the polygon count and triangulates. So let's just take go back to this one, this sphere here. This one and we'll actually we'll just move it up here like this so we can see it right next to this one and what we'll do is we'll go decimate and we'll say number of triangles or triangle target point so we'll just bring it down to something really really low 
Preserve the painting, yes, please try and keep the, the painting done. And we'll just hit decimate. And what it does is it has a go, it triangulates, but it tries to keep the same shape as it was. But it will actually triangulate the surface like this. And as you can see, this was a lot of quads, a lot of four sided. And this is now a lot of triangles. When we use this, it's usually when we're about to go to 3D print because it lowers the polygon count and doesn't change the look of the surface. So that's usually where we would want to use that. You can go really, really low. So percentage of decimation, um, you can say 100% and decimate and it'll do one. Let's just, just see what happens. Or you can go really, really low and do it that way. And it's gone too low there, so let's undo that. And let's go, um, let's try it at about something like 12% of what it originally was and decimate it. And you can see there, it's a much, much lower polygon count. You can go down to something like 1%, which would be, let's just tap in and we'll go 1% of what it is. But you, But the problem with that is you start to lose the integrity of the model. Decimate it. See if it will do it, and there you go. Now that's good if you just want some background shapes and you want them to keep the shape that you've got roughly, but you want really, really low polygon. Um, so it is useful for, for those kind of things. And that's that panel. There is a lot in there um, across those four buttons. And I, my, my gut feeling is that that will change in the future, the way that this is laid out. But that, that's pretty much the four that you need to be aware of. There's lots of other stuff in there like the UV unwrapping. So for example, you can just hit Atlas unwrap on that model. And there you go, you have a UV unwrap of that model. So there's tons of good stuff in there. But in terms of um, the, the, the four most useful things, it's multi-resolution, voxel resolution or voxel, dyne topo, which is the same name as Blender actually. And then this last one, which is all about your decimation. We've just hit 30,000 subscribers on the channel, which is an amazing achievement. It really shows that people are liking what we do. Our goal is to help people create in new and innovative ways. And hopefully we'll do, we're doing that at the moment. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we can let you know when we drop new content, which is every week.